Right, here we are today at Acorn Midweek Affordable. Um, sadly, I've drawn peg 36, which is not a peg that I wanted to draw. And so I've decided that we're going to have a little go for the silvers today and just catch some fish. So it's, I've left all my pellets in the bag. I've got uh, three pints of maggots from the tackle shop. And we're just going to start from there. I've got a full depth rig, a shallow rig, and an edge rig. Because sometimes you can catch good silvers in the edge here. I'm doing my best to avoid carp. I just fed a nice big pinch of a uh, nice big palm full of maggots down on the big pot. So I'm starting off big pot in, not lot loads of bait, but just putting it using the big pot to try and Oh, I missed what I'm trying to avoid because I've seen there's a lot of these about on the surface. I might have to bulk down a bit. So, oh, that's not, you really have it, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to avoid the carp. So I'm doing all I can to avoid the carp. So the first thing I'm doing is not loose feed it. Not to start with anyway, I might have to loose feed if it doesn't work. Um, I'm not loose feeding and I am just putting the big pot in to try and pin the fish down to the bottom. There's a lot of, I'm next to an aerator, so if there's a bit of noise, I apologise about that, but I can't do anything about it. Well, there will be noise because it's got the M5. There's always the M5 at Acorn, but there'll be a bit of noise as well from the aerator. Steel world, I've brought some worms with me. Typically, I've got a wormery full of them at home. I had it already. Typically, I've got a wormery full of them at home and I ain't brought it with me, so there we are. That's worked well, hasn't it? hoping it's a silver, it would probably be a small car, no it might look. This is a silver, it's got to be a tench. There's a lot of stocky carp in here. That could be what we've got here. But I'm hoping it's a nice tench. Nice soft elastic, so don't be fooled by the amount of elastic that's out. This is elastic for better silvers. It's not really designed for tiny silvers, for better silvers. Hoping that we've got ourselves a tent or something, and we haven't, we've got ourselves a little ghosty. Lovely looking fish, but not what we came for. But we're going to catch some of these, that's just how it goes. I had a little touch down, I didn't strike. Oh, I got it there, it's still on. That's a silverfish. That's a silverfish. Nice little, nice little roach. This is what I'm thinking, I'm hoping that I can sort of fish out each little cup of maggots. And then uh, get that for a roach. When I say a nice little roach, he's not little, is he? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm shipping out, messing around. Them lip blips I was telling you about. Look at them. They've spawned in here. I think I'm going to have a few of them today. So I'm still getting odd fizz and bubbles on the bottom, so it tells me there's still fish down there. So that's quite handy actually, because it, it gives me, it allowed me to gauge when I need to refeed. I hope there's ropes like that down there. I'll take those today. It's 30 minutes into the match. I've had a nice skimmer. I've had two, not, two nice little hand-sized tench plus that roach that you saw me have. So I'm probably on. Two pound and a bit. Taking me toss pot off the end of my pole. Not put any bait in with it. This is the sec only the second time that I'm refed all the match. I'm putting like that much in. If you can see that on there. Put it in my hand so you can see. I'm putting that much in. Literally, this is the second feed of the match. I, I tell I, I fed down the edge to my left about ten minutes ago. A bit of a bigger pot. Because I feel like the response to this bait has been quite good. I've been very, very cautious about how I feed it. But I'm not getting any bubbles now or any signs. So, 
refeeding it, creeping the bait in. I'm not trying to draw the attentions of any carp or anything. I'm just going to go straight over it just to see what the response is. I have also switched to double maggot, which has bought me two nice tench and a skinner. So I'm going to stick with that because it's got some confidence. Although I have bumped a fish because of the dreaded maggot falling over the hook point. But there we are, that's what happens. Still bought down the rig, so we just bought with one drop at the minute. Last fish caught was the skimmer, and since I've caught the skimmer, the swim's definitely noticeably stopped fizzing and bubbling. It's not hectic, but I'm not worried. I can't see anybody else bagging up. A lot of the guys that are fishing for silvers have got worms, which worries me because I haven't. And worms can be a very good bait, obviously, for silvers. They're having the worms, so it's hard to beat. If I don't get any sort of response in the next five minutes, ten minutes, if I don't get a fish or feel like something's happening, there's definitely bubbles down there. Um, and what I might do is try the margin line that I've fed and just let this rest, this, rest, this line settle. But now it's fizzing all around this line now. So there's a few fish down there now, so I've definitely come back to that bait. Oh, a little indication on the float then. Oh, I'm a little bit carried away now, I think. I don't mind it being slow for the first couple of hours and if I can make an odd better fish in that time. Yeah, I think 20 or 30 pound will probably be in the silver's frame today. Basically we've gone from a nice 30 minute start to a really bad last 20 minutes putting that feed in. I was right to be cautious. I perhaps haven't been cautious enough. Two hour update. So the middle the first half an hour went okay and i put like somewhere between two and three pounds in the bag and then the next hour and a half or so has been pretty rough put a little bit more bait in through the cup and it didn't really want to it seemed to it seemed, they didn't seem to want to know and i thought you're not there i went down the edge and he left where i've been putting big cups in and all of the catch was a tiny eyeball roach so I decided to change my tactic and started loose feeding out of hand. It's just it made it for the whole swim fizz a lot more. So they definitely were coming to the loose feed. I then decided to put a pole pot on because there was a lot of carp moving in on, on that area as well. And they were giving me weird bites. So I decided to put a pole pot on and just use that like a loose feed. I haven't seen anybody bagging up, but then you get your head down when you're fishing and there's a little getting a few of these intercept the bait as I drop it in. I have bulked it back down again, trying to get away from them. I do pick up the odd one, I'm not bothered. Just carry on. Just hoping now that we can get it through now. I'll put that away a bit closer. Still seems like it's no. Absolutely ridiculous at the minute. That's not good. Well, I'm not bothered. Oh, that's something better, hopefully it's not a carp and it's a nice tench or something. It's got a tenchy fight about it. But then um, I've said that before when a little carp pops up. There he is. If we can get this rig to the bottom, we can catch these. These one of the smaller ones. So slippy, they just you just drop them right. Have we cracked something now? Can we get through these little roach by putting the rigging out of the way and just dragging it to where we want? I think we got through the small fish again this time. I'm trying to avoid liners off cart now. That could be a foul up cart that was off the that felt like it was off the bottom that fish. I hooked it a few feet off the bottom. Normally you can't when you do that. Yeah, a little carpy. In the mouth actually. Two hours 45 minutes in. I've definitely got 10 pounds of silvers now, maybe a bit more. 
got some nice nice skimmers I'm catching intermittent carp as well small ones just lost a foul hooker what I'm having to do is try and get around the silver fit with a tiny, tiny little blade. I'm still picking up tiny little fish occasionally. But what I'm having to do, instead of swinging the rig out or swinging it out to the right or to the left, is just let it stay sunk after I've shipped it out and then just lift the rig out of the water and just let it swing under so I know that I'm over my baited area. If I try to swing it out past and let it fall through the water out there where bait's been going in, it just can't get to the bottom for bits and bobs. Oh, finally, something's had it there. Always one of them skimmers I was telling you about. Not a jumpy one. But he's the same sort of stamp as we've been catching. A little slightly smaller, actually. We've had a few slightly bigger ones. I was trying to show you. Yeah, he's half the size of what we've been catching. We've been catching twice the size of that. He's not even a pound here. The ones we've been having are much bigger. Just looking for something positive. Oh, that's what. Oh. And there's a jumpy one. They definitely like a bit of feed, don't they? Come straight in on that feed when we give it to them. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Super lively today. They're all jumping around. I mean, he's a slightly better stamp than the last one. They're the sort of stamp I've been getting. Even he's... Um, you have a few better than this one, even. He's not the biggest we've had. But he might squeak. He might squeak a pound. Not quite. Not quite. And yeah, just lifted it. I just did a little strike and then dropped it back in because it always gives you another chance. I'm not sure what this is. It could be. If it's a bream, it's foul lot. I think. Oh no, it's not bream, foul lot. It is a bream, it's not foul lot. Straight in the pine hole. Yeah. Few of them now, happy days. And another one. Ooh. Maybe this is another skimmer. Not doing the jumping again. Starting to get a bit more. I've got a light elastic, I've got like an 11. It's not super light, but it's alright for decent sized silvers. Which is what we're trying to catch here. Yes, baby. Talking about that is what we need. Proper ones, proper units. Right, there's the catch up. Let me just see where we are now. It's just gone. Oh, it's gone under while I was checking the time. It's just gone. It's ten past one. I'll land this fish for you guys and then I'll get to Turn you off for the next update to another skimmer. They're definitely having it now, aren't they? Another hour's passed nearly. Um, just had a nice little run just before the update. The float's just dancing around again at the moment. A bit like there's no decent fish in the swim again. We're back to being blipped about by fish. This is totally changed in the last 10 minutes now. This was going in, going under, going in, going under, going in, going under, and now it's just sitting there. But we're just gonna work through it. Aren't we have been keep the bait going in? There's been a few carp in this room, so maybe they've been in and cleaned out a lot of the maggots. Something's got me up bait, yeah. Yes, good bullet. Well, I'm not bothered. I'm gonna feed again, just because I feel like there's just not the fish there at the minute that there has been. Seems like we've got through the blips this time. Oh, pricked something there, bigger. Missed a little bite there. Uh, 
felt weird. It might have been a foul worker. But a little frustrating spell when I turn the camera on again. I'm going to feed it again though. Be a bit more aggressive now as we move forward because there's definitely some skimmers about. Another foul locker. It's not a foul locker, it's a car pour attention because it's not a skimmer. Down, I'm going to lose this one, he's foul locked. There he's coming back, I think. Yeah, there we are. Not too worried about losing a car. Let me get them boyos. Fokker. Schlack. Let's get it past that. Let's get it past the eyeballs. And I hope that some of these eyeballs, that's a big green just lifted it on, some of these eyeballs will miss it, will miss them. So what I'm doing is just laying out the last bit of line between the maggots and the first dropper, just laying it on the surface. It's straight and out of the way so we can get tangled and just low just dropping the rig straight down so the bolt goes straight down out of the way as fast as it can. And you don't usually get in a tangle if you do that. And then it goes straight to the bottom and you get something. This could be a carpy, which would be sad if it is. What you're gonna get then? It's a bit powerful for a skimmer, it could be a skimmer, it could be a good skimmer if it is. It is a skimmer. Oh, look at I don't even know. in the front door, something there. That door, something. Petrol fins, aren't they? I'm not sure which ones are well. petrol. Them ones at the front. Them fins. 55 minutes left. Just. The last sort of hour or so has been okay, it's not been as good as it could have been. But you know, I've lost a couple of skimmers, I've caught some carp, I've had a few tangles. I don't feel like I've had as many bites as I have had. And the, the, there's, there's fish still there, be it to be caught, and I'm catching them, but there's not as much fizzing and as much activity as there was. So I don't know if there's less fish there now or the liner. I think that's a liner, must be foul like skimmer or something. Put that off the bottom unless it's just gone down, picked it up and popped his head back up. But yeah. It feels different, but it's not necessarily worse, but it's not it's not uh, it's definitely she's hooked in the tail, whatever this is. It's skimmer up in the tail, I think, yeah. Or roach or something, yeah, skimmer up in the tail. Down there still, you can see, I'm not sure if they've just come off the bottom a little bit more. I can't fish from off the bottom because I've still got this problem with eyeballs. You know, every time I do anything except bomb this rig straight to the bottom at 100 miles an hour, if I don't bomb this rig down, I, just, I don't catch a decent fish. That's not because I don't think there's any decent fish on the bottom, off the bottom, should I say, because I think there's plenty of decent fish off the bottom. The issue seems to be. But there's um, too many little fish off the bottom and I'm fishing with maggots. I could change, I could, you could say change baits. Two reasons why I can't. One, I ain't got any other bait with me that's just suitable. I've got pellets, but everything you're gonna catch. Doing this with pellets and and that's it really. I just don't think anything else would work quite as well as this. I'm just going back at the moment to just holding the rig out of the water. Give it a 
couple of goes doing this and if this doesn't give me anything like oh, that's nice if it, that just doesn't work I'm going to say I'll start going past the feed a little bit but maybe they're coming back now for the final hurrah for the day a few of these bear skinners now I don't think I've had a day catching so many good skinners at Acorn for a long time I bought three points on maggots, so I shall probably have the best part of a point left by the end of this current rate of usage, I think. So I've done about two points. Most of it's gone down this hole. I've stopped feeding the uh, line to me left down the edge because when I went over it, it was just bits. And I thought, I just kind of had a feeling that I might catch on this for the rest of them for most of the day. I might be better off just focusing on it. I really want to come off this if I'm catching skimmers. Oh, little things on it again. Well, I'm not bothered. Oh, my goodness. Fine, wee little thing. It's one good thing about being bulked down and the little ones are holding it up, you see it straight away. It's just a little bit frustrating when you're trying to catch two, or two pound skimmers and you keep catching a quarter of an ounce eyeballs. It's a bit rare at Acorn to be pestered by uh, a small fish. You can get normally get away fishing, Megan, do what you want, but these, that, this feels like these are this year's fry or something. Um, you can take them by surprise, really, by them. There's a lot of them in this air rate. Where this air rate is kicking out? Um, tench. Nice skin. It's a little carvey. And where this air rate is kicking out, a lot of oxygenated water, they're all sitting in there dimpling, so I don't know if that's. I've just got all of the tiny fish in, in my little spot there, like. sort of I think that's a skimmer, by the way, that's, that's what the skimmer seems to be doing. You walk one and then they realise they're hooked and they fly off, and they do a first run, and then they just wallow on the top. That seems to be the pattern for the day for them. Plugging away. Feels heavy. Now it feels skimmery. Now it feels kind of happy. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more, yeah, this is carpy, stroke, tenchy, this is not skimmer now. This could be a big car. I didn't know it was hooked and then it was hooked. It was off. And this is something else I'll admit, you know, I've got to expect a little bit of carp action in the last hour. So they can't do lots of coming over feed in the last hour, even down the middle on the bottom, and when you tip tapping it in, trying not to make any noise, you're still going to catch. Carp is, I don't think he's that big after all. No. Three or four pounder. Not in the carp net. Nice fish. Pull him too hard. I'm not pulling loads of. I'm not stripping loads of elastic out. Just letting the big length of elastic do its job. Can help it. Force me to get one more strip on him, and he's just a bit too powerful. I need to get him up like that. Come on, let's have you. Oh, she's in. Four pounder.
Feeling skimmery. Can't be attentive. Or foul look skimmer, but I don't think it's a foul look skimmer. Too fast. I think it's a little erratic car. That last five minutes, guys, I was turning you on to see how we finish up. Getting a lot of small fish the last 10 or 15 minutes, just a lot. Just a nice jumpy skimmer, good pound and a half maybe. And missed the nets with him, he's gone back in, so I'm a bit annoyed about that one. Hopefully that won't cost me anything. Um, plenty of bites, but I'm picking up like roach and um, that sort of size fish. Not necessarily tiny, tiny ones like I've been catching, but still not, not nowhere near as nice a size as those skimmers are. It would have been nice to finish with a run of those, but it's not quite happened. Maybe we can get enough of one out in the next five minutes. It might only be about three and a half, four minutes now, but... So we can nick one out before the end, maybe two, if we get lucky. Fish there. Oh, that could be one. I'm not sure what that is. It feels a bit light now. It's not so light. It's a very small skim. I'll take it. Add it way down. Put him in that little, put that little one in there. First net. Oh, what's this one? Juddery. I feel like a skimmer. Wish head shaking like a, like a perch or a tench. It's a little parasite tench. We have two or three of these today. These are the small ones that are in here. Some real beautiful tension here, which I think you've seen me catch before on, on this channel. If not, get checking out some of the other videos, especially the winter ones from my core. Back in and settled, so we're down. We've passed all the blips. Although the blips haven't been a much of a problem the last 45 minutes. I don't know whether they've moved on or the feeds pushed them down a bit or moved them away or there's a lot more fish in front of me now and so they're not bothering that feels substantial it's only about a small carp or a tench really hoping it's a tench because no one's feeling carpy though pull it a bit and just take the risk because I've only got three units left very erratic could be a tench Oh, it's one of them blighty mud pig things. Vermin, aren't they? Vermin. Oh, there we are. Told you that was my last chance. There we are. By my watch, we finished a minute early. We started about three minutes late. So we've only had five hours and 57 minutes or whatever. <laughs> right, guys, thanks for watching. See you again soon.